We were talking about uh, last time some of the uh, background information about Theophilus, mm -hmm. this guy that was from apparently from Rome, who was hired a guy named Luke, mm -hmm. the doctor, to go and research in the land of Judea what he had heard. Right. And so this is his response to Theophilus in his first writing. Um, actually his second writing. The mm -hmm. first one was the Gospel of Luke. Okay. Okay. And so the former book I wrote, which is the Gospel of Luke, O Theophilus, concerning all those things that our God, Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord, mm -hmm. Yeshua the Messiah, began to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after he had commanded the Talmudim, that is his disciples, those whom he had chosen by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, those to whom also showed his nefesh, what is that? Uh, suffering. His suffering while alive after he had suffered with many signs for 40 days while being seen of them and speaking about the kingdom of God. So he was seen by them after his resurrection mm -hmm. for approximately 40 days. <clears throat> it's a key number because we're going to be getting, days. We're going to be getting to this in just a moment about these number of days and why they're gathered together at these particular times and stuff. We'll get into that in just a moment. So for approximately 40 days after he dies, he's appearing to them and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while he ate bread with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, don't leave Jerusalem, but they should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me. For Yohanan, John, immersed in water, but you will be immersed in Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, after not many days. I'm not so say baptized in here, but immersed. It's immersed is the same would, thing. Right. It would, it's interesting that they would translate immersed into baptized. That's what baptized means. Just immersed. Baptismo, baptizo hmm. is the Greek term. Hmm. But uh, um, the, the Hebrew has a different term that I've totally forgotten. But yeah, it means to be immersed in water. Okay. The Catholic Church, for some reason, sprinkles water. Other mm. people do different things. They put a little water on the head. But there's actually in, a pool at Radiant now that they yeah they there actually you go. immerse you completely right. in water. And that's what it means. And it has to do that baptizo Greek word has to do with um, <clears throat> dye dyeing your shirt. Mm. You stick the whole shirt underneath the dye so that when it comes out, it's a it's different a color. color. Mm -hmm. If you don't dip it all the way in it's, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be tie-dyed <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what that has to do with and immersed i think is probably a good term for baptism oh, immersed okay you will be baptized by the ruach hakodesh the holy spirit after not many days so not many days is approximately 10 days later mm -hmm. he appears to them for 40 days and then 10 days later so he's talking about in 10 days and while they were assembled with him, they asked him and said to him, Our Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Mm -hmm. They had asked him that previously in the Gospels. Of what, Luke. Is, what is the sign? Of, yeah, in Luke and in Matthew and in Mark, but not in John. The disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, one time. Is it yard day? It looks like it. Apparently. <laughs> Good to know. <clears throat> um, they had asked him previously, you know, what is the sign of your coming and all this stuff? When, when are you coming back? And he, that time, gave them a big explanation, prophet, prophecy, oh, same. about when he's coming back. And that's what you and I were talking about, the wheat and all that stuff? Not quite. Okay. Not quite. Um, he answered them more fully in a big dial the Olivet on the Mount of Olives gave them a big discourse about what's going to happen and when and you'll see where this. was that at? that's in Matthew, Matthew chapter 24 and 25 I'm going to take and a look at it yeah um, well we can look at it right now as a matter of fact it, they ask him again they're obviously very yeah. curious about this <laughs> hey uh, we asked you about this and they're like children dad 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 <laughs> yeah you can look at Matthew chapter 24 and that's in the New Testament right? uh huh yeah 
Matthew chapter 27, you said? 24? 24. And so, uh, we'll, we'll read this, and this is them asking him again, when are you coming back? And they asked him again just before he went up. At that time, in the book of Acts, he shuts him down completely. Gotcha. He says, don't worry about it. You're going to get power from the Holy Spirit, and you're going to be my disciples throughout the whole world. But in this time, they ask him in the book of Matthew, and he actually answers them. And right at, right at the beginning, it says, They left the temple area, Yeshua went out, and as he was departing from the temple. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. His Talmudim, his disciples, came near in order to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh, you know, they're saying, hey, isn't this awesome, man? Look at these buildings. Super awesome temple. Mm -hmm. But he answered them saying, regard you all these things? Truly I tell you, there will not be left here a stone upon a stone that will not be overthrown. Mm -hmm. This temple that you guys think is so awesome is going to be torn down. Mm -hmm. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, his Talmudim, his disciples, approached him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what sign will there be at your coming and of the end of the world? Because he had just said to them, this building is going to be <clears throat> torn down, they immediately said, when, are these, when is this going to be? Yeah. And then they say, and what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? That's really three separate questions. Sure it is. It, a lot of people miss that, though. They it's, think, ways, what, it's three it totally is. different it's, questions. It's really three different questions, and a lot of people say, well, no, those are all three questions about the same thing. Mm -mm. When are you coming back? Mm -hmm. It's really not. It's when are, when are, when are these things going to be that you talked about with mm -hmm. the temple falling down? Mm -hmm. What will be the sign? What sign will there be at your coming? And when, when is the end of the world? Mm -hmm. And Yeshua said to them, let no man deceive you. And this is a massive area of deception and confusion. Mm -hmm. So and this we is have where the been, false prophets. Start we to... have been seriously confused. We have not taken his his uh, advice to let no man deceive mm -hmm. us. <laughs> For many will come in my name, saying, "I am Messiah," mm -hmm. and will deceive many. Now, this is a curious thing because some people have interpreted this to say, "Many people are going to come saying, i 'I'm the Christ.'" That's what mine says, I am the Christ. Right. But some people <clears throat> read this to say, many will come saying, Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. Well, there's a huge difference. He's saying, many will come in my name. Right. It doesn't say they're going to be coming saying, I am a Messiah. Right. Me, John, am a Messiah. They're going to be coming saying, Yeshua was the Messiah and deceiving many people in Yeshua's name. Mm. So that's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, that translation because is completely different. most people have traditionally thought, well, this just means people will come proclaiming themselves to be a Messiah. That's not what he says. He says they're coming in his name. So there will be many come hmm. in, in Yeshua's name saying he is the Messiah and will deceive many. Hmm. Now, is that... So hard to believe. No, no, yeah, it's well, not. you look at what just. Not happened. when you look at it now. Howard, whatever that guy's name is, that proclaimed the oh, end of the world the twice. Howard Camping. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He's he's he said Jesus is sure. the Messiah. But. And there's, well, and I think if you just back up and look at this from a much broader lens, you'll see that. Um, what are some of the things that Christians believe? What are some of the things that Christians have done mm -hmm. uh, that show clearly that this is not of the Messiah? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Nazis used Christianity to right. destroy the Jews. Right. Um, used Martin Luther explicitly. Yeah. And there are Christian leaders in this world now who are very far off of the mark. You can see them on Channel 21. Yeah. The, the Trinity Broadcasting Network. <laughs> with the Crystal all kinds Palace. Of, yeah, the whatever. Crystal Palace. All kinds of weird people out there preaching all kinds of strange things mm -hmm. that are. And they're coming in Yeshua's name. Mm-hmm saying he's the Messiah and they're deceiving many unfortunately hmm. for you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye are not foolish what does yours say but see to it that you are not alarmed see to it that you are not alarmed yeah you, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed right 
And I believe that what the original text says, see that you are not foolish, becoming alarmed by things right. that uh, you shouldn't be alarmed right. about because I told you about them in the beginning. Right. It must be that such things be done, but the end is not yet. Mm -hmm. She says, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, that's not the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be pestilence and famine and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are but the beginning of plagues. What does yours say? All these are the beginning of birth pains. Birth pains. That is a, probably the most accurate translation, birth pains. So he says there's going to be... Did that just go off? It did, didn't it? That um, yeah. it, it just basically says here that there will be wars and rumors of wars. The end is not yet. Mm -hmm. Nations going to rise against kingdom and kingdom and kingdom. <clears throat> pestilence, famine, and earthquakes all over the place. These are the beginning of signs mm -hmm. of birth pangs. Now, you know, you've had children. When the birth pangs come on the woman, that's contractions, mm -hmm. labor. Mm -hmm. Um, how do they come at first? Usually in, you know, form of like cramping and then... Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, painful. Right. And f kind of farther apart. Right. The contractions. Yeah, much or further the, apart. the birth pains right, right, right. Are, are... They start off kind of slow, a little intense. It all depends on how much epidural you have. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. So <laughs> these birth pangs that he's talking about here... Mm -hmm. uh, begin kind of intense mm -hmm. but then what happens with birth pangs they yeah. get much more intense well not only yeah when Huge they come intense. faster yeah they come more closer together mm -hmm. and more intense mm -hmm. so that's really to pay attention here because that's what he's saying that these you're going to feel like man this is the end and it hurts but really that's the beginning yeah once you notice that the birth pangs are getting more intense and are closer together then you'll be able to tell. Mm. So these birth playing, these birth pangs are nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilence and famine and earthquakes. And what what pe pestilence? Because I don't. That's not even in here. Mine just says there will be famines and earthquakes in oh, various places. Pestilence would be uh, disease. Disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. And these are but the beginning of the birth pangs. Mm -hmm. Then they will give you over to tribulation and will slay you. And all goyim, or Gentiles, or all nations, mm -hmm. will hate you on account of my name. Mm -hmm. And then many <clears throat> will be offended, and a man will betray his neighbor. Yes, a man will hate his brother. And many false prophets will arise, and will lead many astray. And because apostasy will abound, wickedness, mm -hmm, the love of many will grow cold. But whoever endures to the end, the same will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Hmm. So he's... Now this is a very... People have choked on this for a long time. What is he talking about? Mm -hmm. When is he talking about? Let this, let's finish here. It's because it's almost done. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> when you, therefore, will see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, he who said that it would stand in the set apart place. Whoever reads, let him understand. So this is in the middle of Yeshua talking, mm -hmm. quoting Daniel, mm -hmm. Matthew interjects and says, pay attention now, whenever you read this, understand it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <clears throat> let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains. And he that is upon the roof, let him not go down to take anything out of his house. And he that is in the field, let him not return to take his clothes. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that are about to bear, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray that your flight be not in winter.